the three rail sweep. And to do that, I'm going to make a sketch on the front view plane and throw a ring size six down in the middle. I'm going to put some stones in just for a visual. And I'm going to do that by going to the jeweler's bench, clicking on stone. Center stone, I'll make a uh, one carat and drag that up. Perfect. And I'm actually, I'll show you guys another trick. I'm going to put a plane in. We'll do orthogonal along, there we go. And from this side, it doesn't need to be a big plane. I'll just do 10 by 10. Pull it up and move it out on the Y. Let's do 10. Oh, excuse me. Move it out and move it out on the X to, let's say, 10. Now let's view it. Probably 7. Up, we'll do five. Okay, we're just going to have this plane match up with the girdle of the center stone. And we'll name it side stone plane. And validate. Side stone plane, perfect. And then we'll go back to the jeweler's bench, put another stone, this time a half carat, onto this plane. And if you notice, I pre-selected the plane, so the reference plane is the side stone plane. I could undo that, just click on stone, click on the hand, and then change the reference plane, like so. The nice thing about this now is to adjust it, I don't click on the stone, I click on the plane. Let's move it out like 6.5. Recompute. Um, perhaps that's a little far. We'll move it back to 6. 6 and we'll bring it down to 10. And recompute. We'll get it from the top. We'll bring it over, touch more, recompute. Now the stone lines up perfectly. And I'll just mirror it across the center plane for the visual. OK, now I'm going to step back into the sketch, and I'm going to draw the outline of my shank. My snaps are still on. That's fine. I'll turn them off in a second. I'm just going to drop like five control points. Now I'll turn my grid snaps off and I'll start to shape out this shank. Now we know that uh, my grid is a half millimeter so I want the bottom to be just about two millimeters thick. That does it and now I can just adjust this. I want this to kind of dip in and come out like like so. A little thin there at the bottom. Just drag that out like this. Maybe it gets a little thick in the middle. And and just play with it till we get the curve just the way we want it. Like um, and that's looking pretty good for this example. Okay, and that looks perfect. So I'm going to. Now switch to the side view, but staying in the sketch. I'm going to change to the side view, selecting the path I just drew. And then I'm going to use the move, grab the black arrow, and move it out to 2 on the Z. So now this path, all of the, its coordinate Zs are 2. Now if I was to mirror this path inside the sketch and make the 3 rail sweep, if I change this point, let's say I move it to 1.5, the other side does not follow suit. So I'm going to undo that. Excuse me. Change this back to 2. Validate. 
Now I'm going to leave the sketch and go into the solid module and mirror that same path curve in 3D. Now you see I have the white curve and the yellow curve. If I go back into my sketch now and I start playing with the individual points, like this one I'll change to 1.5, this one 1.5 as well, this one 1 millimeter, and this one 1, one millimeter, you see that my other curve turned red. And now if I hit recompute, it's going to be a perfect mirror of it. I'm going to make a knife edge shank in this example, so I want to smooth out this area here. And you see the, the beauty of the 3D mirror is now this curve. No matter what I do to it, it's going to be a mirror image of the other. So I'm going to go in and uh, draw my first cross section with my grid snaps on. I'm going to use the symmetrical vertical tool and draw one, two, three, one, two, three. There's my first cross section. And I'm going to make a copy of it, moving negative five and keep the original. So these are going to be my two cross sections. I need to recompute, and now I'll show you how a three rail sweep works. Hide by axes and plane so you can see a little better. It's very important in a three in a three path sweep the order in which I select the paths. So I'll choose one, two, three, the compression curve. Now if I click on sweep and I choose the section, you see it makes a big old mess. That has to do with the fact that the the curves are different from each other. This curve and this curve are fine as their copies, but this curve, the ring size, has a different starting point and different number of control points. So I'm going to click on Path Auto Orientation and now Validate, and that will fix the problem. Perfect. Now I want to show you what would happen if I selected in the wrong order. If I selected one, two, three, and sweep, turning on path ori auto orientation, and validate, this happens. And the reason for that is it's using this curve and this curve as the path curves, and this as the compression curve. So it's very important to select your paths first and your compression last. Choose sweep, add the cross section in, path auto orientation, and validate. So you can see that the paths guide the cross section around and the compression curve adds the height. So if I was to take this ring size and change it to, let's say, and change it to, let's say, a size 3, it's going to change the thickness of the sweep. Hope that's clear. Change it back to a size 6 and validate. All right. So... Let's add some more cross sections. Let's go. Let's pop back into the sketch. Like I said, I want to make this a knife edge. So I'm going to take this cross section, pull it up to the knife edge. When I recompute, you'll see that a knife edge kind of goes around the I'm going to make it a little bit, I'm going to turn my grid snaps off and make that a little bit more knifey, a little sharper. And recompute. Nice. Now that's giving me what I want. All right, so I'm going to click back on my sweep and go into the solid module, click on my sections tabs, and I'm going to add another section. 
I'm going to select the hand, this one. And now you see it doesn't default to zero. I have to hit the hand again and choose the section I want. So I'll choose, I want it to go down here. And now you see this yellow cross section and this yellow cross section, it's slowly morphing into the other. So now if I was to cut and delete, I get the square cross section at the bottom and the knife edge cross section at the top. So with a three path sweep, the thickness of the cross sections, the dimensions of the cross sections are defined by the paths. The other thing I want you to notice is this path, I'll draw a rectangle and put a radius edges on it. Um, we'll go like this, doesn't even matter the size. We'll do four by two. I'll put some rounded corners on it. So now these cross sections look very similar, but if you watch, if I go back into my sweep, undo, undo that, and I go back into my sweep for this one, and now I validate, I'm going to have big problems. The reason for that is these two curves are not copies of each other like these two are. So they have different starting points and different number of uh, control points. If I double click back on my sweep and under sections, just like in paths, I have this option, hinting of sections. And it's going to allow me to rebuild all the curves. And this should fix my problem. But in general, just so you guys know, I usually make copies for the cross sections. So I'm just going to double click back and switch that curve to this one. Turn off hinting of sections and validate. The other thing I want you to notice is the cross sections are only def defined on this side. So this side is not going to be a mirror image. And the way I handle that generally is by cutting and delete one side and mirroring the other side over. All right, let's add one more cross section and then I'll take this ring a couple of steps further just to show you where I'm going with it. And then uh, that'll pretty much wrap up the uh, one, two, three sweeps. Keeping the original, making a copy. I'm going to have it kind of cut in. Actually, undo that. I'm going to make this one kind of rounded at the top. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back to my sweep and I'm going to add one more section, choosing this and place it there. And now what I really want to happen is I want it to curve in here. So I could go to back to my sweep, go to my section orientation and rotate it by 180 and validate. But here's the problem. The way in which I've done it it flips all of them. So yes, I have the rounding here like I wanted to, but now the knife edge is facing in the wrong direction. I just wanted to point out that the section orientation applies to all of the sections. So if I wanted the effect that I was trying to get at, it would have to curve down here. I'm going to turn off. I'm going to turn the effect back to normal validate. Now when I recompute, I have the effect that I was going for. And to even increase that effect, I'm going to make this sharper like the knife edge and recompute. So now I have the knife edge, but I also have the rounding on the inside.